She looked so pretty. Peggy was her name. She smelled of fresh linen. Her lips were moving, but you weren't focusing. She was so pretty. She stares at you, waiting for a response. You snap back into reality. Sorry, you say. She smiles and runs her fingers nervously through her hair. Chesapeake Bay Bridge, she asks. You nod and give directions. She thanks you and drives off. Getting back into your car, you follow her. She looks so pretty, you think. Behind her now, you, she pulls over. You walk to her window and say, thinking about it, there's a better route, but it's hard to explain. You offer to drive with her. Smiling, she agrees. You get in and buckle up. She looks so pretty. This was Charles William Davis, and this is the good, the bad, and the pure evil. So very little is known about Charles William Davis before his crimes. He was born June 18, 1947 in Baltimore. His father was a police lieutenant. In the 60s, David was an, Davis was an electrician, security guard, and volunteer to the Baltimore Volunteer Rescue Squad. He had a wife who he later divorced and a son. In the 70s, he took courses to be a lab tech. He moved in with a single mother, Bonnie Kellner. He met her when volunteering. He knew a lot of law enforcers, and this gave him insight into investigation methods and ways not to get caught when he started his crimes. In 1973, he was convicted of a violation with a handgun, but it's not known or clear if he went to prison for this. And that's basically all that's known about him until 1974. Late 1974, Davis came across a traffic accident that had a 23-year-old female in it. Being the knight in shining armor, he offered to help. But instead of rescuing her, he dragged her into the woods nearby. He raped her and tried to strangle her. As he was strangling her, she passed out, and Davis thought she was dead, so he left. Regaining consciousness, she was able to get back to the town and get help. She told the police of the incident and a facial sketch was done up of her attacker. In September 1975, he met and went on a date with 16-year-old Lydia Norman. Davis was 28 at the time. On the date, he suggested sex, which Lydia declined, so Davis battered her, raped her and strangled her. Months later, Davis lost custody of his son. He blamed the social worker and decided to assault her in revenge. New Year's Eve, he attended a club and lured a woman he thought was the social worker to his car. As he drove, he copped on this wasn't the social worker he had just kidnapped. He had kidnapped 24-year-old Kathleen Cook, a stranger who had nothing to do with his case. Kathleen would argue to be let go, threatening Davis with legal action as her fiancé was a police officer. But Davis ignored her, going to an empty car park where he raped her. During this, Kathleen made fun of him, calling him impotent and unpopular with women. Furious, Davis grabbed his gun and shot her four times, but this didn't kill her. Kathleen was able to run back to the car to try to get to the horn to sound for help. But she was so badly wounded, Davis was able to catch up with her and stabbed her several times. This time, he killed her. August 24, 1976, Davis was on the I-95 and Peggy Pompian, 23, approached him for help with directions to Chesapeake Bay Bridge. After explaining, she left, but Davis tailed her, eventually forcing her to pull over. Davis approached and said he had a better route for her to take. She allowed him into her car and Davis would map out the route using a pencil and then all of a sudden pulled a revolver and demanded money. She did what he asked and Davis raped her at gunpoint. Peggy would try to escape after hitting him in the face. A struggle happened. It ended with Davis shooting Peggy five times in the chest, killing her. 
He wiped down the car and went to New York to create an alibi. Eight hours later, Peggy was found. Ballistic tests showed a match to Kathleen Cook's murder and so connecting the two. September 3rd, Davis met another woman on I-95 and raped her, but he let her live. February 23rd, 1977, Davis approached a pregnant woman asking for help. He took her to his car, drove to the woods, robbed her, raped her and then released her. July 20th, 1977, Davis was out driving. Two police officers, David Horn and Gary Hartman, pulled Davis over after they noticed his license plate was stolen. When questioned, Davis said that the plate was indeed stolen, but wouldn't tell them why. The officers asked him to step out of the car and they inspected the interior. Inside, they found a CB radio under the car seat. Discussing between themselves, the officers came to the idea the CB radio was stolen, so they arrested Davis for theft and took him to the county jail. So sitting in jail, Davis kept his innocent statement and produced a receipt from a store showing he legally bought the item. This had the theft charge thrown out and Davis freed. But later it was found out the credit card he used to buy the CB radio was stolen. The credit card belonged to the husband of Karen Willingham, the pregnant woman Davis assaulted. She was asked to come to the station and she was shown a photo of Davis and immediately identified him as the man who attacked her, robbed her and raped her. An arrest warrant was issued to Davis. By August 31st, uh, officers found out Davis was working in Reno, Nevada as an ambulance dispatch helper. September 1st, he was arrested. On the 4th, he was extradited back to Baltimore for trial. While driving there with the officers, Davis announced he wanted to confess the murder of Peggy Pumpian. The officers read him his rights, took him to the station, and here they videoed him confessing to the killing of Pumpian and Kathleen Cook. The next day, he was formally indicted with their murders. From the arrest, there was a decision to be made amongst law enforcement officials. They met to discuss how to prosecute the case. The murders happened within Baltimore, but it was decided Davis would be tried in separate trials in different venues, as there was a fear the publicity Davis might not be given a fair trial. With this, he was moved to Allegheny County to be charged with Kathleen Cook's murder. Early 1978, he was found guilty and sentenced to life on April 12, 1978. Next was the murder trial of Pompeian. Already serving life, his attorneys filed a mistrial, which was granted. But the trial would go ahead, and the second trial, he was found guilty of murdering Pompeian and sentenced to life April 1979. Early 1979, he was moved to Anne Arundel County for the trial murdering Norman. The next, the year after, he was found guilty and sentenced to life again with the possibility of parole after 48 years. Since all this, he remains incarcerated and spending years in various penitentiaries. Early 80s, he was interviewed many times by FBI agent John Douglas, who was creating profiles to help a future capturing of serial killers. As of June 2022, he is still alive and currently serving at Jess of Correctional Institution. And that is the story of Charles William Davis. Like and subscribe on my YouTube channel and podcast. And join me next time for Francis Arsentive, The Sleeping Beauty of Everest. This story is short and tragic. She was an American who became the first woman from the US to reach the summit of Everest without the help of bottled oxygen. She sadly died during her descent. Until then, this was the good, the bad and the pure evil.